bet you're glad you got the graveyard shift eh? after lunch. Fabricia <laughs> Kaski, but you won't want to sleep after you hear this last. We know that we know that right? Nobody's liked it. Die out. So, and let's start a session, Emma. During this session, me bead and I need to whisk out a least fun night, sort of back and forth. So we've got Carwin and Helen, and they deep in and come right a little bit in Welsh, deep in and say snag. I quite me with Christopher and Nate and say snag, modelling beautifully how to wear the headphones. <laughs> I love it when people wear them like aliens from out of space, <laughs> like they're looking for some kind of signal, so don't do that. Yanta, <laughs> Becky, um, we're going to hear some <coughs> inspiring and excellent practices um, that are happening here in the Wrexham area. So, Carwin Davis has been head teacher of a secondary school in Wrexham and formerly was deputy head teacher of a secondary school in Ceredigion. Oh, West is there. Oh, is that your belly? <laughs> it's rumbling, isn't it? <laughs> He's now working for Wrexham County Borough Council as a senior school support officer in the education department. Carwin represents the local authority on the region's Welsh language strategic board. I think Chris or Carwin. Helen. Helen said, you can cut my bit right down. I don't know which bits to cut out, so I'm just going to read it. Yeah? So Helen Davis received her education through the medium of Welsh before graduating from Aberystwyth University and completing postgraduate studies in the College of Law in Chester. So she worked for a year in, um, for several Wrexham Council education advisors before completing the graduate teaching programme through Bangor University and St Joseph's Catholic and Anglican High School in Wrexham. Helen has taught Welsh in St Joseph's High School for 10 years. During this time, she has been responsible for bilingualism, uh, curriculum Cymraeg and ESDGC throughout the school. She was also a member of the Welsh BAC school team and Helen has worked for a year as a lead practitioner for Welsh as a second language for Wrexham and Flintshire for Gwe. So she was recently appointed as head of the Welsh department at St Joseph's School. Chris, Helen. Um, uh, Christopher Wilkinson. So Chris is head teacher of St Joseph's Catholic and Anglican High School in Wrexham. He has held a number of SLT posts in England and Wales. He originates from Bury and is in the early acquisition phase when it comes to learning Welsh. I love that. I'm in the early acquisition phase. I speak a little bit. I understand more, so you can't say anything about me. Yeah? So, um, Chris Ocanes, Christopher. Right, my passion in line, I'll pass you on. So, if you have a microphone, if you want a freestyle, because it keeps swinging out, you're welcome to take it off and give us a little sing song. Yeah? So, if you have a microphone, you have a loud. Yeah. 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 I'll forget that it was Christian P. Watt. My triodator, microphone of an Adam or Dumel, but an actor Jimmy Triot and Wara Delvis or a microphone, so you'll be sure that he could have a young in a cabin. Um, like a queen, um, a true lignard, a Gumrai, a Bray, and throwing in your sister, um, on my sleep, yeah, and we thought. Um, oh, well, lucky are a screen of an Adam, and I shall add Am Christian P. Watt, um, the Nibel of the Dodd. With the wooden wheat or a key, it was Stol, Ukra, Stol San Joseph, um, and Rick Sam. A Buriat, we in Kavlina Hill, Kin Pasham Line, E. Chris Helen within. But you're a Kipahuti destiny, or an Sitani Kirad, a point to ma, or Elner Artal, a sile of your American cinema. But she, um, a Nigel and Ruth, a look here, Buriat with her father, a Duke Stilia Guithly, Mount Stilia, um, Kimrai, Mount Stol, Ukra, and Rick Sam. Felly, dwi'n dweud chdi bach o gymdyr i chi a gystyn. Um, Sonwyd bora ma yn nhw'n gadaled am dan blyn yr eitha y llywodraeth a'r bwriad ar gyfer y miwyn o'n siaradwyr. Y gwrs, y gyrwr yn hyn a'i gyd, a popeth sy'n gyrru hyn ydy y strategaeth miwyn o'n siaradwyr, sef Cymraeg 2010 miwyn o siaradwyr. Ond ar lefal addysg, y tobl dwi'n llwch chi bora ma, um, ma gyn anni cynhadaeth ein cenedl. Um, a, of course, my hunger and cannot be in charge of the 
Dwi'n llindio fydd angen yn y byd addysg yn mwy na mater i'r strategiaeth o ddilyn o siaradwyr. Ac yn dilyn hynny, cyhoeddwyd y cynllun gweithredu. Lan, wrth gwrs, mae hwn yn manylu camau penodol ar gyfer y maes addysg dros y cyfnod weloch i fanna rhwng 2007 i 2021. Ond, dwi wedi jyst canolbwyntio ar un agwedd penodol i reid enghraifft i chi ar gyfer y cyfluniad yma. O nhw fewn y ddogfyn yn adw siwr, da chi gyd yn ymwybodol yn y fo, a dwi'n sychu bod yma amdan y cynsiniwm iaith, a enni enghraifft yw'n adwybod newidiadau mawr wedi bod yn y cymwyster ail iaith, yn yr ysgolyn uwchradd, ar gyfer y cymwyster hynny. Ond hefyd, welwch chi fan yna, bod mae yna bwyslais ar bob lleoliad ysgol. Felly ni'n jyst ysgol yn cyfrwm Cymraeg, ond ar bob ysgol er mwyn cynnu cyfleoedd i gynyddu y defnydd i hangiach ar gyfer dysgwyr o'r Gymraeg a gwreiddio'r ferion defnydd iaith ym mhob ysgol. Felly, mwn ffordd, dehongliad hwnna sy'n un dadlad i bod mae angen normaleiddio ddefnyddio gair sy'n cael ei ddefnyddio, normaleiddio'r Gymraeg yn defnydd y disgyblion. Ac wrth gwrs, ar gyfer y proffesiwn, mi'n smegdi yma cohedwyd y safonau proffesiwnol newydd yn mi'n smegdi. Ac wrth gwrs, i ddilyn hynna, er mwyn cefnogi ag i sicrhau bod ansawdd yn digwydd, mae fframaeth ar olygu estyn yn cydblethu ac yn cynnwys yn ystyried y blynyddiaethau cenedlaethol yna yn y fframaeth newydd, o pwyslais benodol ar y Gymraeg. So, looking or concentrating on a couple of those elements there. So, looking at the professional standards, the new professional standards, I've just highlighted um, a couple of the, um, the key areas um, to hopefully <coughs> illustrate um, and support the presentation we've got for you today and as, as a context and background. So, in terms of the professional learning standard, um, there's a st the different strands, as you're fully aware, within the standards, but there's a Welsh language skills strand within um, the, 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 the professional standards. And you can see there the progression from QTS to induction up to continued professional development with the golden thread of um, promoting and developing skills within the Welsh language being core to these standards. And just to illustrate, the yeah, illustrations in yellow there, uh, to highlight, but I'll just quickly um, reference, the teacher actively seeks opportunities to apply and extend their understanding and skills in the use of the Welsh language. So there's obvious challenges um, facing um, the profession there because of what we heard this morning and the context and the differences and um, the profiles of the areas within Wales. Then moving on to formal leadership, um, again in the pedagogy and promoting Welsh language and culture, um, the role of leadership and leaders within school and managers within school um, to again promote and develop this ethos. So leadership Sex examples to learners, colleagues and community with a positive commitment to enjoy learning the Welsh language. These are part of the standards now. And again, under the, 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 the standard for professional learning, again under the leadership, supporting growth in others. Just to quote, every effort is made to embrace the learning of the Welsh language as an example to others. So you can see how the standards now reflect and support these national priorities which I summarised on the previous sheet. Quickly, looking at Estyn, um, again, the Common Inspection Framework. Um, it's re it requires inspectors to inspect and offer specific observations. So they're supposed to provide observations on these following key areas. 1.3, 3.3 and 5.1 within the, uh, the Inspection Framework. And just to um, refer to two of those areas quickly, looking at provision in the 3.3. Um, Inspectors should evaluate the degree of the school's provision for developing Welsh language skills in formal, but also in informal situations. And also, they should um, consider how well the school teaches pupils about the advantages of learning Welsh and being bilingual. And then lastly, looking at leadership. Obviously, looking at an evaluation of the degree in which leaders manage, managers purposely and succeed achieve national priorities. I think the second paragraph there is important. Inspectors should judge to what degree leaders and managers intentionally plan to provide purposeful opportunities for pupils to develop their Welsh language skills in formal, 
and informal situations. Again, the informal is, is being referred to. So, continuing on to how we got to this particular point. So, that's the national picture and the context. So, from a local authority perspective, we have our statutory document, the, uh, the West, the Well Strategic Action Plan, which has specific actions in it to try and respond to these challenges. And this pilot is a part of that. Uh, it supports our local document there. So, um, we also wanted to have a desire be, be proactive um, in responding to the challenge facing our schools um, and providing possible strategic solutions and importantly having a done with approach more than a done to. We wanted to involve schools and have the solutions come from within. Of course, we heard this morning about the, the language audit. Well, there's an opportunity there for a baseline to move forward and build on, so we wanted to respond to that. And, and help support our workforce within schools. And lastly, which is important again um, supporting the previous uh, principles, which is provide options for the workforce to be able to respond um, to the challenge in a flexible, comfortable, but importantly confident manner that those principles were there. So what did we do then? Well, taking all this on board and of course taking into consideration the location of Wrexham and an, er an area similar to Wrexham being very close to the border, um, uh, you know, we, we, there's going to be a, a huge challenge for our, specifically our English medium schools, and especially the secondary schools. Now, there is specific, specific support available through the Welsh advisory teachers that we have within the local authorities supporting our English medium colleagues and, 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 and teachers there. So, the opportunity there was to look at the secondary as well. And so we held discussions between um, the local authority and um, representatives from the secondary school sector, in the, in the authority, and to identify what was going on, any good examples, um, and see if there was an opportunity to build on something and develop a pilot project that could hopefully benefit the wider school community. So that led us to have a discussion with St Joseph, uh, with St Joseph School, Catholic and Anglican High School in Wrexham, and also to um, have an opportunity to work with local partners as well. And as part of the pilot, which is looking to encourage staff um, to engage um, in, in, in the participation of Welsh, um, but also uh, learning some skills and upskilling um, some skills within Welsh, uh, within the Welsh language. But involving local partners, as I mentioned, for example, Colin Cambria, who are part of the pilot, which you'll hear more for in, in a second now. But I think it's important to note as well that the experiences we've had from this pilot um, over the last few months has, has allowed us to, to look at developing phase two and we're currently um, working on the successes of this pilot and we're in discussion with another secondary school in Wrexham and with colleagues from Flintshire as well, we're in discussion with a secondary uh, school in Flintshire to develop this on a wider scale, so learning from what we've done and sharing that good practice. So I'll stop there now for a second and I'll pass you on to Chris and Helen who will take you through the pilot. <coughs> Okay, so Helen Davis are doing, uh, doing Ben I had to make a ride in Wrexham. Um, doing, uh, I'm Sharon and Baylock Hebbard, um, and he destined in Scully. Um, I've got Carwin, but I shared in Gabriel and Kerry, and Quedin and some of that to say today. Actually, in quality guys. Um, there's an issue of Kerry work with Kerry and in Scully. Then go back to us for a couple of Kerry that he may only discuss. Um, my new cover my own a Scully Henry a dinu. Um, gan ddeis geisio defnyddio'r iaith ar y coridor neu yn y stafellau dosbarth a plant a staff um, a hefyd o um, i weld y Gymraeg yn weledol o gwmpas yr ysgol hefyd er enghraifft posteri, um, arddangos feidd, uh, pethau ar y coridor ac yn y stafellau dosbarth hefyd. Felly, da ni'n gobeithio creu naws ac ysbrydoli pawb um, er mwyn cael pawb yn ei lliw ac felly yn defnyddio Gymraeg. Felly dyma enghraifft um, o arddangosfa yn y, yn y coridor ac mae'n ymddwyn fel sbardyn um, i atgoffa plant a staff hefyd i ddefnyddio'r Gymraeg. <coughs> Felly mae troi at y Seisneg Rwan. So as I said, um, we're hoping to get everyone on board with this um, pilot and this venture at our school. Um, and it is everybody's responsibility to use Welsh and to support incidental Welsh at St Joseph's. Um, it is the, essentially, it's important that SLT 
faculty take an active role um, and to be seen to be taking a role as well in supporting bilingualism at school. So as you can see on the slide, it talks about staff, SLT, teachers, TAs, office and admin staff, pupils, governors, PTA, chaplaincy team as we're um, a church school. Basically, it's everybody's responsibility and not just the Welsh Department's role. I think occasionally people think, oh, Welsh is for what the Welsh Department, numeracy for maths, literacy for English. It's not. It's all everybody's role in the same way. So we do have a statement for Welsh in our handbook, and it's important that that is a living thing and in other schools as well, that it is seen, it is heard around the school in practice. So we tried to get everybody on board. Um, by making it a non-threatening experience, trying to make it fun, enjoyable and supportive. Um, we collect feedback from staff as well, so we try to respond to their needs um, and adapt the programme of what we're doing in order to suit them also, and also the pupils as well. So basically we're trying to get everybody together. We're trying to promote confidence of staff and to break down barriers. Um, we try to, as I say, listen to what staff want, um, and therefore we are getting a good response from staff because we're all in it together. We try to make the activities light-hearted. Um, for example, as I'll explain later, uh, we have sort of like a speed dating scenario where staff move from one group to the next in, in training sessions. We've introduced, you know, using Welsh cakes, having Max Boy shouting oggy 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 for the, the timer and things like that. Um, trying to get staff to use Welsh by praising them. We, so we had a Seren School Show Board where um, staff were able to um, identify other teachers using Welsh and then give them a star on a board. A bit like primary school in that respect, uh, but actually it, it, in the initial stages of trying to get staff on board, that was a good way to do it. So we tried to make sure that we're all approachable, sorry, um, and to make that to be the norm so that people are happy and confident using Welsh around the school. So we started off by trying to create a brand. So um, we did that by um, involving pupils in the process. We created a logo competition, and that entry that was then digitalized, um, and then displayed around the school on all the whiteboards. Um, we added the tagline, Think Welsh, Speak Welsh, Craig Mynedd Gymraeg. Um, and that is basically as a reminder. Now, when I've done training before, I've always tried to think, you know, it's trying to get Welsh on the radar, trying to get staff to remember to include Welsh in their lessons and on the corridors. Um, they've got so many other things to do within that lesson, and it's just trying to make it a second nature thing, sort of um, a spartan, if you like, so a reminder. Um, and as I say, we had people's input, and that, um, that was the winning entry with the tagline added to it. So as, I say, um, as you can see, well, we tried to make it a pupil friendly, well the person who, di who, who designed it made it a pupil friendly um, and then also, as I say, it's just, it's just a constant reminder as it is on the whiteboard, you know, uh, during lessons that staff and also the pupils can try to refer to Welsh, um, Welsh language within their lessons. We also did the same thing for the curriculum committee um, process. Because initially, when I first started teaching, um, teachers, and, teachers were mixing up between curriculum Cymraeg and bilingualism. And some believed if they were talking about Welsh examples in lessons, that that was bilingualism. So we broke it down and made it clear that the, there were differences between the two, and that now is taken on board. So we gave the pupils the um, responsibility to educate staff and pupils in this. And they came up with a definition of both curriculum Cymraeg and bilingualism. Um, and they then presented that to the staff in training um, and afternoon briefings. And then those um, definitions are also available in the handbook. So it's important to get pupils' um, input in the process, as we can see. But before we can do that, it's important that we train staff in order to give them confidence um, and improve their knowledge of Welsh before, um, before they actually try to approach to use it in the classroom. So we try to improve confidence of staff, TAs and office staff. Um, we do that by training and skills sessions um, and good practice meetings and one-to-one -one going through Welsh words and vocabulary with them. Um, I've been to the um, 
I say um an awful lot, I'm just aware of that, so I've been picked up on that before, so sorry. <laughs> um, there we go. So yes, um, I've been into the um, office staff, with the office staff, and been through things and methods of ways of then using and introducing Welsh within the school, so obviously if you get people, visitors, come into the school. Um, on the phone as well, so they try to answer the phone bilingually. Also, they are now, and I think this is the main difference uh, that's making a difference around the school, is using the Tannoy in Welsh. So they're doing Welsh or bilingual announcements on the Tannoy. So negacy blant, negacy staff, and then they say it in English as well initially. And then we hope then to say, obviously, that they'll just be doing that in Welsh. So it creates a Welsh atmosphere. Um, so if you have guests to school, and we often have guest speakers and things like that, people like that, you know, it's creating a Welsh um, environment. So we've also created resources to help the staff, and I'll explain those in a minute. Um, and we've in, involved the process of having Welsh-speaking staff teaching other staff who don't speak Welsh, um, Welsh, and, and to help them with the, the process. Also, Chris will be talking in a second about Skype sessions, which uh, colleague Cambria got involved with as well. And then those uh, staff fed back to the other staff and tried to teach them a little bit of what they had learnt. Um, which was great, obviously, if you're a non-Welsh speaker and you're then trying to teach somebody else in Welsh, you know, it boosts your confidence and other staff can see as well that that is, um, you know, they've learned, they've got done the process and then they get on board as well. So we're all in this together and there's a few photographs um, of the teachers taking part in training sessions. As you can see, um, you've got smaller groups there, so it's a less daunting experience. Staff are able to ask questions. Um, we can drill through lang language and grammar. Lots of the feedback is they're not people aren't always sure how to say certain words. Therefore, they become apprehensive and then not happy, um, and therefore forget or don't want to use Welsh. So, if they're able to practice the Welsh, do a bit of drilling, uh, ask questions, um, they find that really useful. Um, feedback from staff as well. Um, initially, I just used to sort of try to mix the groups together, and now the feedback was: can they have differentiated groups? So groups with Welsh speakers, um, more sort of more able in Welsh, if you like, and then people who have never had any experience in Welsh and not put together initially. Well, later on, that's what we've done. Um, we had like a speed dating task where you had the non-Welsh speakers um, being taught by Welsh speakers on different topics, and then a timer going, and then moving to different groups. Um, and then also making sure we cover a variety of, of, of topics. And then we moved on to actually getting staff standing up and throwing a ball around, because I like to do that in my class sometimes, getting people to think on their feet and not be stuck looking at the information. So that's where we went with that. Um, and then basically feedback from staff was they need time to practice. They need time on the, the meeting schedule or mon um, in morning briefings and things like that. Opportunities to practice and to keep it on the radar as well. So we created resources to help staff um, by, well, we've done a variety of things. Um, we've, we've produced handouts, um, a booklet, and with that booklet um, I, I tried to create different scenarios for each page. So pulling together anything that's relevant for a classroom experience all on the one page, um, anything that's relevant for staff on duty on one page, the office staff their vocabulary that they would use on one page, um, TAs, things that they might say on one page, and that was then put together obviously with um, additional information like time and number and things, things like that, but trying to make it user friendly for staff. So if they've got information there, it's helpful for them. But then we also created sound bites, or in the process of creating the sound bites and involving pupils with that as well, so staff can then go away and hear them, click on them in their own time, um, hear the pronunciation and then they've got the visual and also the um that they can listen as well um also bookmarks and swatch cards uh, with with key information because it's then to hand posters signs around the school months of the year classwork homework on the whiteboard uh, lesson objectives resources for worship as we are um, a church school it's important that we try to support the chaplaincy team as well and also as we see in a second it is everyone's responsibility to to perform an act of worship Therefore, we, uh, I wrote a prayer in Welsh to try to make it something that staff could use, introduce Welsh into their lesson, into their morning worship, into their assemblies. And this would be something that um, non-church schools could use as well, as I say. So I tried to make it quite snappy, something that's quite easy to say, and it's a tick in the box, if you like, for staff to try to use Welsh in their worship of the day. So it, I'm, I'm going to say it, I said I was going to. Help our needy indeed, 
a fod yn hapus ac yn gryf, ddiolch yn anbopeth, ein teulu ffrindiau a ddysg a phrofiadau yn denod i amen. So it's quite, it's quite short, it's something that we got the Welsh ambassadors, which who I'll explain about in a minute, to come in and teach other, other pupils and staff how to say, um, so it wasn't sort of the unknown, and once again, it's, um, it's been recorded, so staff have got access to that as well. Um, so we took the, we, we created resources, but then also we took the steps to source resources as well. Um, and this mainly is to act as a prompt. So we got um, Hessian bags for staff with the logo and keywords on. Um, we got pencil cases for pupils, red pencil cases for pupils with vocabulary on and the logo on. Um, we have purchased USB sticks for staff with the logo on, and then obviously I'll be putting the resources on for them. Um, we've got Welsh lanyards, so the vocabulary, but also if they're not a Welsh speaker, there's one that's been created with the Welsh and the English name of the school. Um, Welsh stickers of praise, golden reward slips, so if staff feel that pupils are using Welsh around the school, they give them a golden reward slip and they are put into a drawer at the end of the term. Uh, vocabulary, vocab I can't say that word, vocabulary posters, um, a travel mug just to remind staff as well so whilst they're working at home or in school to try to improve their Welsh. And as I say, they, they work to promote and um, prompt to create a spadden, as I said, so some sort of reminder for staff to have it on their radar, which is reflected obviously in the tagline, Think Welsh. So Think Welsh, then you speak Welsh, and then to create a Welsh community, so Craig Minard from Mraig. We then created a film, um, and we included um, the Welsh ambassadors in that film, so that was something that we sourced as well. So those are some examples of the um, things that we've created or, or, or sourced. So we've got the months of the year, we've got the stickers of praise which are put in pupils' books, we've got um, handouts, as I said, that we've created, we've put Welsh dragon pictures around the school of word art, so things linking to bilingualism have been put in the shape of the dragon, um, the bookmarks, the hessian bag, the lanyards, all of those things are helping to promote, promote Wales and Welshness, and there's some more as well. Oh, and our big Welsh dragon, which is on the corridor, which is outside my classroom, and I love it, the pupils love it as well, um, and it's obviously promoting Welsh. So we're trying to make it a positive thing for staff, but also for pupils. So we've created the system of having uh, golden reward slips, or Tukane Gwabur Air, um, where, as I say, if pupils are heard to be speaking Welsh around the school, they get given a golden reward slip, and they keep those to put into a drawer at the end of term, um, the winner gets picked out, and they receive a voucher. It's a bit of bribery in a nice way, but it works, and pupils are like receiving these golden reward slips. The stickers as well, reward stickers. There's an award each term as well, so when we have award ceremonies each term, um, pupils who speak the most Welsh or support Welsh the most, they're given um, an award from each year, and then at the final summer term, there's a, a main award, which is a shield, which is given to the um, that pupil. Um, and as I say, it, it just helps to promote Welsh within the community as well, so parents are seeing that there's an, a winner for that award, um, and it makes pupils proud of that as well. I jumped ahead, I have. Yeah, so we've got the Welsh Ambassadors. They, we chose to pick pupils from each form group, and we've got quite a lot, we've got about 60. Um, we looked at MAP pupils, we looked at pupils who were supportive of Welsh, we looked at pupils who would be polite with staff um, and supportive of staff, because it's horrible to probably be in a situation where you're expected to do something and you're not confident, um, or you're worried you're going to make a mistake. So the role of the Ambassadors is to help the staff with their use of Welsh, but they're also acting as a prompt for pupils as well. And I've actually had other pupils coming to me saying, can't I be an ambassador, you feel awful. But um, yeah, it's actually nice to, to have that support there from the other pupils as well. So they are taking an active role within the school and they're proud. And recently they started to um, take up um, sessions with the Ed, for Cymraeg Bob Deeds, and the Ed for coming in to take some sessions at lunchtime for Clue Kinyo. They wear a Welsh Dragon badge, so they are identifiable by school, uh, by teachers. They've given presentations for me, they've helped out in open evenings, and they're helping with the recording, the sound bites. They've helped to educate other staff and pupils as well, as I say, with learning that Welsh prayer as well. And here's some pictures just to show their, um, them in action. Um, and I think because I've got pupils on board, it's more likely to succeed. I think if you just had it as teacher-led and teacher-driven, pupils might turn off. 
Um, but because the pupils are taking an active role, it's making it a better and easier experience for staff and for pupils, and everyone's a bit more supportive. So events at school are identified across the calendar, um, and these link to curriculum Cymraeg. It also um, makes it an, whilst an enjoyable experience. So we've got the Club Kenya um, at lunchtime, we've got the Schoolish Edward, the Earth, um, we've got St David's Day parades and Welshness Week. Uh, masses and liturgies, governors, PTA meetings, we're trying to, um, that's the next step for me really to go to try to talk to them and, and just explain what we're doing um, to them as well. So there's um, just a few pictures just to show you um, their involvement <coughs> and activities that we do. And it helps to promote the Welsh culture as well and heritage. And also a number of our pupils are Yale, so it's nice to see them getting on board and enjoying the experiences um, and often <coughs> you know, they pick up the Welsh really well and that's great to see. So, we're on a journey together. Um, it's important that the staff know that they're not by themselves, that it's a group thing that they, they're involved with. Um, and we are continuing on our journey now in order to promote this further, to try to help move on from the, the simple phrases of Welsh into more complex sentences, get, getting more of a response, you know, asking Welsh, asking of, of the pupils to staff. So we, we are still on the journey. Um, I did go to uh, visit the primary schools, the feeder primary schools, and it was useful to see what they are doing with Welsh as well in order to secure, uh, secure consistency. Um, pupils, therefore, uh, being exposed to Welsh in their primary schools, incidental Welsh in their primary schools, they come to the secondary school using Welsh within their secondary school and continuing that journey and then on to the future. And that links in now with the million Welsh speakers in Wales because it's their future. We probably you know, we, we are basically role models for them. If they want to become teachers in the future, they are expected to be able to use some Welsh if they are going to be one of the million Welsh speakers. So we should be role models to them. We should be trying to help them, you know, to, to use incidental Welsh. And that will take time and money, which is required of schools in order to do that successfully. But Gidan Gilead, together, hopefully, we're going to um, address what we need to do, which is to think Welsh, speak Welsh, and play Gymunig Gymraeg. Uh, Sorry, I feel like you've been sat there for about an hour already, so I'm going to try and keep it brief and get us back on track. You heard I'm from Bury. Bury, I've got uh, Lancashire vowels, and I uh, remember starting at St Joseph's five years ago, thinking this is brilliant, I'm going to learn Welsh. Week one, Borodar. You know, week two, now da. Week three, not swipe that. You know where this is going. Week four, uh, and and so on it went. And there are some non-negotiables that pretty much every school has. Does that make us bilingual? Not quite sure. Probably not. I can't wait for the day that I can speak fluently and I can go on holiday on the Clin Peninsula to a certain place that I love, and I've told the story before, and order my bread in Welsh, and some of you might be able to guess where that is. Um, outcomes, pupil outcomes at St Joseph's, in terms of second language Welsh GCSE, are phenomenal. I am so proud, I'm so proud of Helen and the Welsh department, and I'm so privileged to have followed uh, a, a head teacher that really uh, championed bilingualism and Welsh in school. So I've inherited a culture which is one where, I suppose, where there's a will, there's a way. Now, ordinarily, I would say that principle works, apart from the fact when you get to thinking about learning a language, many people can think, yeah, there's a will, uh, but a million reasons why they can't commit the time to do that. And certainly, from a school point of view, in terms of being a head teacher as well, letting people out of school to go on courses where they can do it, it's quite expensive, there's a detrimental impact on children. So we needed to find a new way and that new way was having Welsh lessons that would benefit staff in school in terms of bilingualism, use of informal Welsh. I, um, I'm sure Helen was fed up and, and the rest of uh, my Welsh speaking colleagues that I would go to them and say I want to be able to say this, I say this a lot in school but I want to be able to say it in Welsh, you know, my gloch wedi mint. I want to be able to say certain things, but that's not me learning Welsh either. That's just repetition, I suppose, of phrase. But it's good to try and reinforce that with the children. But I want to learn Welsh properly. And I'd like that 
for 2052 because I think I'm still going to be in post. I think it's the final year uh, before I, I get to my normal pension age. So um, I'll be uh, retiring in 2051. So hopefully there'll be a, a million Welsh speakers. And we're starting on that journey. We're trying to do our bit at St. Joseph's. So I'll get back to the script, Helen. Uh, teachers were identified to take part in Skype sessions, learning Welsh uh, with the local college. Um, I think identified is an interesting phrase because I remember leaving my office after we were told we got funding for this. Sounds like a brilliant idea. Teachers can sit in front of their laptops on Skype and learn Welsh. It's what I wanted to do. It provided me the flexibility to do it when I wanted to do it. So I set off out of my office and the first 10 members of staff that I stopped and then I asked them if they wanted to be, to be part of it said yes. So I was absolutely amazed and I said to Helen, I've got them already, I had them before break time. So we had five groups and I think one of the important things about um, learning language is that it's a social thing, isn't it? It's about being able to converse with somebody and also building social capital. I envisaged sitting uh, at my house, maybe a colleague who I know coming round, having a glass of wine, being on Skype, learning Welsh, having a chat about it, it being fun. Because I think where there's fun and there's social capital, I think there's a higher chance of people engaging and there being impact or success from it. So we've got these five pairs. Um, we met face to face with a college tutor and we uh, completed a questionnaire about our competency in Welsh today. And we set off thinking about, we were going to do a, an eight week course um, half of which would be useful for in school, but half of which would be useful for us in terms of being able to order bread on the Thin Peninsula as well. So that it was useful to us. What I will say, since I joined St. Joseph's and I started getting into uh, Welsh, I live in Chester, and the people in my local Tesco think I'm bonkers because I say thank you. I've got the, 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 the best kind of Welsh manners that I use in Chester, and it, I think it really confuses them. So I use it all the time, even when I'm not in school, and I'm doing it in Tesco. Uh, but it, flexibility, to do it where we want, to do it at home at seven in the evening, to do it straight after school in our classrooms on a laptop there, but the flexibility for it to fit in with normal life. And, and some of the staff who were involved in the project have significant out of school commitments. Some, they can stay for the meeting for an hour, but actually they've got to go and collect their own children, They've got to take them home, sort them out, feed them, and then when they're in bed, they can start about thinking about other things like marking and, and all the other things that we do day in, day out. And one of those things could be sitting down in front of Skype and learning a language. Have you moved on? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so we thought about um, the best way of doing that and having some consistency to that learning. And Helen met with the college and a booklet or a course was created. And that was really important. One of the things that was really important about it was there were certain nuances in terms of Welsh second language GCSE, there were phrases that were used or, or ways that um, it would be taught in school and the pupils would be useful, uh, used to, but certainly in the college it might be done differently, so it was really important that we synergise those. But it was impor important that the content was appropriate for us to be able to move informal use of Welsh on uh, during the day as well. And as the course progressed, of course it was adapted because some people were able to go quicker, some people went to slower, we got to different places. It was just normal differentiation, I think, in terms of learning a language. At the end of it, uh, those who participated in the project fed back to the rest of the staff. Um, they also did some demonstrations, they shared some uh, videos, and they also helped lead sessions with other staff. And there was, from that next one, uh, there was an appetite for them to continue and to do even more of it, to take it to a next level, and for others who weren't involved in it, who came and said, how come I didn't get a chance to be involved in it? So we're moving on now to a second phase of the project where the same people who started will do another course to move it on further, and some other um, people, uh, staff in school, uh, will begin on that. Now, what I do want to do is just show you a couple of video clips uh, before we finish, just so you can see these lessons in action and we got some of them around and uh, I'm really grateful to my colleagues for allowing us to video it because um, it is nerve-wracking. Um, learning a language is something where I suppose uh, you're very vulnerable again. Uh, certainly from my point of view I don't even sound Welsh and one of the most convincing things about those people who learn Welsh is that they actually sound Welsh and they pronounce 
uh, the, the Welsh alphabet as, as you would want and make sense of those words. I'm just filling in now, so you can play. Diolch and Iawn. I can say now something along the lines of Helen, kick me if it's wrong, yeah. something like um, Dyn i'n mynd i'r tafn ar ôl ysgol Naw ma! Nidni! We're not going to go there, she would never do that! Probably put a, 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 canol, a canolfan ham then Yeah, yeah Naw ma! Deal! Hamster! That's the tutor you can hear Now then the question Okay Some of our um, uh, year 10 children will probably be appalled that that's the level of learning. But we've got to accept that's where we start from. More than, more than I thought, probably two thirds of my staff are English and, and, and speak English and, and haven't been immersed in Welsh. Sorry, Helen. Yep. I'm covering the. Uh... Yeah. So now you'll see the familiar term. Right. So, kelch or nachelch is formal. Okay? So the one you need to use is. We'll write this in as well. Yeah. K. 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 Or Nake. Nake. Yeah, I've heard of Nake. Yeah. I was saying no. Okay. <laughs> so, familiar. Okay. So, let's have a look at the question now then. Gai. Gai. Okay. So, Gai, obviously, you're used to it with Gai in yeah. the toilet, so we're going to fly through this. <laughs> so, I want you to ask me, can I take a message? Okay, ga i gymryd neges? Ia, daiwti. Gwyr. Can I make an appointment? Um, ga i neud appointaid. Diad. 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 They would never say that in real life. Can I go to the meeting? <laughs> right, this next one just shows you a little bit that they are having fun. Okay, uh, it's not. What's here? Um, Sylvester Stallone. Um, my Gamble um, washt Toeth a mae gan ddo fo llygaid brown A iawn, da iawn, try to do a two reckless one Ok, ok Yma, Amanda si ffri Dois gan fi hi ddim wallt brown a na na i know you didn't have to tell me a na for gay brown there you go for christmas um it's not father christmas it's sean con santa claus will go with them Dois ganddo fod ddim wall coch na dois ganddo fod ddim 
plug eyed grid. Oh, you know. I'm just saying he hasn't got green eyes. I might have my that. eyes. I am blown away. I didn't know she knew Father Christmas that well. What her eyes does? I'm the same glass. On that note, um, I don't know if you want to say about Nick. Yeah, oh, well, go on. Well, Nick wasn't able to come to our um, after, so those were the clips we showed <laughs> yeah. to some staff. And um, the next teacher wasn't actually able to attend the meeting, so he did a little interview with me earlier in the day. Ooh. <laughs> Poor doll. Pal. I love Wales. Everything in Wales. But I'm not Welsh, so speaking Welsh was really quite difficult for me. My previous work on Welsh has been good, and, and I think I've got quite a lot of it covered for the for welcoming pupils and things like that. But I haven't got a clue about the letters and, and what they meant. So um, when Mr. Wilkinson asked me to do this pilot scheme on learning Welsh, I thought, yeah, let's do it, let's go for it. So I did it straight away and signed up. And then a few weeks later, I thought, how the heck am I going to get this in with my action-packed life? <laughs> but it turned out to be not a problem at all. Not a problem. I get home on a Tuesday night and put the PC on and have a cup of coffee next to me and I put Skype on and away we went. Really, really chilled out, really relaxed and it was absolutely brilliant. And we had such good fun. So one hour went like a flash really and we spent a long time looking at the basics. And what I really liked about it is that we, we had a lesson or two lessons just on the alphabet. And I didn't even realise that two letters were actually one letter in the Welsh language. <laughs> so there's loads of things that I picked up from the basics. We had a really good laugh. Um, I, and I worked with Josie and our instructor Gordon. He made it so easy and relaxed. The hour just went really, really quickly. So I really encourage you to, sa to sign up. After six weeks, I might not be a genius at Welsh, but I do have a much better understanding. And what's more, I can pronounce most of the words that I hadn't got a clue about beforehand. So I'd really encourage you to have a go at it, sign up, it's not a hassle at all, it doesn't take loads of time, and you can do most of it at home anyway, well, I can do all of it at home. So I'm hoping that I get selected for round two next year so that I can learn some more. Okay, I'm sorry I couldn't be with you, but I might see you later on. Oh, no, no, no. You've seen that. <laughs> yeah. Um, Akanola. Okay, so we had um, a videographer, filmographer, who from Pros. Um, and he's a friend of mine, he came into school to help to create a film in order to show, um, well, showcase in a way what we've been doing and also to get the pupils involved and they love getting involved in this, there's a bit of a buzz on the days that he came in and then he got just in the name. So, okay, yeah. It's going to work. at our school. Hopefully when people walk around our school they will know it's a school in Wales. We have all embarked on raising awareness of Welsh and supporting bilingualism at school together. Good and good. So I am a Welsh speaker. I had a Welsh education myself. I went through living part of the culture of being in Wales, going to the Eisteddfod Fordai, going to university in Wales, and I'm proud to be Welsh. I'm also a Welsh second language teacher in a school in Wrexham. Some people would say, for example, that Wrexham is a very anglicised area. You could say that some people are against learning Welsh, or they say that the language is dying, and I would strongly disagree with that. And you can just see that from the um, response by our pupils at school, by our teachers in our community. This is very much a living and a growing language um, in Wales. I've lived in Wales for 19 years and I've always been too afraid to learn Welsh simply because I felt I wouldn't be able to do it. 
I was asked to do the pilot. It was really good fun. It was very engaging. We did our lessons at school, so we didn't have to go to college. We were able to do it over Skype, which was perfect for us. Now in the classroom, I'm able to greet the class confidently. What a dark help. I'm able to ask them to stand behind their chairs and to pack away. I'm able to praise them and feel more confident when I'm marking their books too. Being a Welsh ambassador gives us an active role within the school. Welsh has been included in whole school events like liturgies, assemblies and award ceremonies. We held a transition event for the Year 6 pupils. The Welsh ambassadors taught lessons about bilingualism and the ambassadors' role at school and curriculum can write. The Year 6 pupils responded very well and lots of golden award stuffs were distributed. We encourage students to use incidental Welsh in school and at home. We also try to boost their confidence as learning a second language isn't always easy. We aim to create a Welsh community. The office and reception staff have been trained to use Welsh on the tannoy to create a Welsh environment at school. Good morning, St Joseph's School. Dalati, keep going. Dream moon high, Sharon Kamraig. Welsh Government have made no bones about the fact that they've got a very aspirational target for 2050 of a million speakers in Wales. And that won't happen if schools aren't engaged in improving and upskilling their staff in the use of Welsh. But ultimately, I'll have retired by 2050, and so will most of my staff. But the influence that we have now on ensuring that the quality of Welsh teaching uh, but also the experience that pupils have out and about in school, but not only the pupils, their parents and the extended community too, as they come and join us as part of our community events here at school. That will help prepare and set the seeds in place uh, for the growth that will need to happen uh, throughout 2020, 2030 and 2040. Support Welsh, promote bilingualism, our future is in your hands. Think Welsh, speak Welsh, great for the minute to come back. Look, very on.